beautiful thing it is again to come in your presence. We are always happy back to the Bible to speak to you from God's word. We want you to experience it for yourself and experience his salvation. My name is James Easton O'Garrow, and uh, I'm here with my dear wife, Shannon O'Garrow. And today we want to look at God's word once again. Before we get into the word, let us pray. Loving Lord, we are thankful that you have been so good to us. Even now, open our understanding and help us to recognize your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, so far we have gone through five studies and we're now on study number six, uh, section two, uh, creation. And let me read a short statement for you. God has revealed in scripture the authentic and historical account of his creative activity. He created the universe. And in a recent six day creation, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that in them and rested the seventh day. Thus he established the Sabbath as a perpetual memorial of the, of the work he performed and completed during six literal days that together with the Sabbath constitute the same unit of time that we call a week today. The first man and woman were made in the image of God as the crowning work of creation, given dominion over the world and charged with responsibility to care for it. When the world was finished, it was very good, declaring the glory of God. You're gonna... So, our first question that we want to answer today is how was the world made? Psalm chapter 33, verses 6 and 9. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. And verse 9, For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. So how was the world made? The Bible says here, by the word of the Lord. So... The creation was done by the word of the Lord. And verse 9 says, he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. So God speak, speak everything into existence. What a powerful God that we serve. Psalm 104 and verse 5. Who laid the foundation of the earth that it should not be removed forever? And here... The question is asked, who laid the foundation of the earth? And we just learned that God, he did create this world and uh, he laid the foundation for this world. Now, let's see what Isaiah has to say. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 26 and 28. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Oh, praise the Lord, not one faileth. And, the Lord. and verse 28, mm -hmm. hast thou not known, hast thou not heard? that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. So, the Bible says that the everlasting God, uh, the Lord, is the creator of the ends of the earth. And so God created all things. And remember we mentioned early in our studies that the Godhead is three distinct persons in one working together, working together for man's benefit, working together for the upholding of this universe. So, let us hear what Hebrews has to say. Who made the world then? 
The world was made by the word of God. We're told that the Lord, he created all things. Uh, but who is there a particular person of the Godhead that was more instrumental in creation? Let's see what the Bible says. Hebrews 1 and verse 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. And so here in the Bible, uh, Paul in Hebrew is speaking about God the Father. And he said that God the Father in these last days has spoken unto us by his Son, that is Jesus, the second person of the Godhead, who he had appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds. So here the Bible is telling us that the worlds were made by Jesus. Let's see what the verse 3 has to say of, 11, of Hebrews 11. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do not appear which do appear. So the son, Hebrews uh, 1, was telling us that God said that uh, by his son he created the worlds, and here we are told that uh, it was created or framed by the word of God. Now, does this have anything to do with Jesus? Let's hear what the Bible says. First, uh, John chapter 1, verses 3, and 1 to 3. And 40. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Mm -hmm. And verse 14, yeah. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the Bible says here, John, the beloved John is saying that the word of God, the word was God. And then he identified and all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. And then he identified who the word was. In verse 14, he says that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we know that that is Jesus. So the word was framed, was made, was created by Jesus. He was the active agent in creation. He is the word, as John says. So, Colossians. Chapter 14, or chapter 1, verses 14 to 17. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. And that's Jesus. We have redemption through his blood, Jesus' blood, and forgiveness of sins through Jesus' blood. Continue. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? So he's the image of God. He is in the same likeness. Verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So here, verse 16, we're told, for by him were all things created, him, Jesus. All things were created by him in heaven and in earth. And... Uh, all things were created by him and for him. Verse 17. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So not only did he create all things, but by him all <coughs> things consist. God did not make this world and leave it on its own, but he is up keep this earth. They, it's kept by him. They consist by him, as the Bible puts it here. There is a constant effort made to explain the work of creation as a result of natural causes. 
and human reasoning is accepted even by professed Christians in opposition to plain scripture facts. Just how God accomplished the work of creation, he has never revealed to men. Human science cannot search out the secrets of the Most High. His creative power is as incomprehensible as his existence. And that's taken from Patriarchs and Prophets. Uh, the sophistry in regard to the world being created in an indefinite period of time is one of Satan's falsehoods. God speaks to the human family in language they can comprehend. He does not leave the matter so indefinite that human beings cannot handle it according to their theories. When the Lord declares that he made the world in six days and rested on the seventh day, he meant the day of 24 hours, which he has marked off by the rising and setting of the sun, taken from Testimonies to Ministers, pages 135 and 136 by Ellen G. White. So, let's see how uh, man was made. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. All right. So the Bible says that in the creation process, God said, let us, and again, we mentioned earlier on when we studied uh, the Godhead, uh, that us implies more than one. And so the three persons of the Godhead were there and said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So when Satan came to Eve and tempted her and told her that they would be like God, he was promising something that he couldn't produce and that, that was not necessary because man was already like God. We are made in the image of God. We are made in his likeness. And he has given us rulership over the earth. That's what he did for our forefathers. But Satan uses his trickery to get men to disobey God. And that's what he's still doing today, using his trickery. So God created man in his own image. So we are created in the image of God. We are like God already. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So the process of making man, remember when he created everything else, he called them, he spoke them into existence. But with man, it was different. Instead of calling man forth, and he could have done that, Jesus would have called Adam forth, but instead he bent down and uh, took some dust and dirt beside the river, I, I imagine, and formed and fashioned him into his uh, figure. And then he bent down close and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul, the Bible says. So here we see uh, an equation. Dust of the ground. Dust of the ground plus breath of life equals what? A living soul. And dust of the ground minus breath of life means a dead soul. So man is a soul. 
not uh, some entity that he has within him, but man is a soul. The word soul is more accurately rendered being, and you can see in a number of translations. Uh, in the NIV, Genesis 2.7, the, uh, the, the translation, and the man became a living soul, a living being, sorry. In the New King James Version, and man became a living being. Uh, in the Christian Standard Bible, and man became a living being. And in the English Standard Version, and the man became a living creature. So man is a soul, a being, not an entity within him. Not so you have a never dying soul to save. No, man is a soul. And the Bible says the soul that sinned, it shall die. Genesis 2.19. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So I want you to catch this, beloved. And out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air. So the animals, the creatures, were made from the dust of the ground. Now let's catch this. Genesis 7, verses 21 and 22. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle, and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land died. So here, talking about the flood and the destruction that took place. And the Bible says that everything died, every cattle, every fowl, every creeping thing, and every man who were not protected because those men who were in the ark were protected by God. The Bible says every flesh died. And verse 22 says, all in whose nostril was the breath of life. So you will note here that animals and creatures were made of the dust of the ground and had the breath of life breathed into their nostril. Just like man. So every beast, every fowl was made from the dust of the ground. Just like man. Every beast and fowl uh, as the, the breath of life in his nostrils like man. No one calls an animal or bird a soul. No one says that they have a soul within them or a never dying soul to save. No, because it is not so. I wanted to make that point. Now, the making of woman, the Bible says what in Genesis 2.18? And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. Okay. So God decided man should not be alone. So he's going to make him somebody to be with him. Verses 21 and 22 of Genesis 2. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So here we notice that the woman was made differently. And this is significant. God could have formed her out of the dust of the ground too. Or he could have called her into existence. But instead he took a rib from man. And out of that rib, he fashioned and formed his companion, showing the closeness that should be between man and woman. I wish we had time to develop this thing. And, and so we, we, we need to recognize that man and woman are closely bond together 
from the time they were made. Psalm 139, verse 40. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. So man is a marvelous creation, as the Bible puts it. Uh, man was made a little lower than the angels, the Bible says. Uh, in Psalm chapter 8 and verse 15, the Bible, and verse 5, sorry, the Bible says, For thou but, hast made him a little lower than the angels. That's significant. And he did what? And crowned him with glory and honor. And he crowned him with glory and honor. So man was made a special beloved. He was made just a little lower than the angel and he was crowned with glory and honor. And he was given dominion. I'm seeing that our time is going fast. Uh, we may not be able to finish this presentation as we'd like to, but we will uh, maybe pick it up next time. So he is crowned him with glory and honor. Let's hear what Isaiah says in Isaiah 43 and verse 7. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. So God has crowned man with glory and honor. Why? Because he created man for his glory. We are to give glory to God. That's why we are here. God created us for his glory. And if our lives are not giving glory to God, if our lives are not lived to glorify God, then we are missing our purpose and we are missing the mark. But not only will he be created for his glory, but the Bible says in Revelation chapter 4, let's see what the Bible says in verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So God not only created us for his glory, to give glory to him, but he created us for his pleasure. It was the pleasure of Jesus to come down in the cool of the day and talk to and commune with, with Adam and Eve before sin. And if you notice throughout the Bible, it was always God's intention to be with his people. That's why he told him to make a sanctuary that I may dwell among you. He wants to be with his people. He wants to be with us. He wants to commune with us. He, he wants to live with us. He, he wants to come in and sup with us, according to Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. And so we need today, beloved, to recognize that the important thing in our life is to live, to glorify God, to give him glory, and live so he can be pleased with us. We created for his pleasure. I want to read to you from Patriarchs and Prophets, page 45. We're told, man was to bear God's image, both in outward resemblance and in character. Christ alone is the expressed image of the Father, but man was formed in the likeness of God. His mind was capable of comprehending divine things. His affections were pure. His appetites and passions were under the control of reason. He was holy and happy in, in bearing the image of God and in perfect obedience to his will. And beloved, you will never truly be happy until you are in perfect obedience with the will of God. That's why all of us need to come to Jesus uh, and to live to give him glory. From the story of redemption, again by the prophet to the remnant, page 21, we're told, as Adam came forth from the hand of his creator, he was of noble height and beautiful symmetry. He was more than twice as tall as men now living upon the earth and as well proportioned. His features were perfect and beautiful. His complexion was neither white nor sallow, but ruddy, glowing with the rich tint of health. Eve was not quite as tall as Adam. 
Her head reached a little above his shoulder. She too was noble, perfect in symmetry, and very beautiful. The story of redemption, page 21. God made us to perfection, beloved. And God wants to restore us to that perfection. So we're gonna look at uh, 10 basic laws of nature as we as seen in the creation. And uh, in Genesis chapter one, and remember Jesus, the Bible says, and God said, he said, let there be light. Genesis one and verse three. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Oh, praise the Lord. So, so the first law is the law of light. There's nothing can survive without light. If, I, if everything was darkness here, we would not survive. Plants will not survive. Color and harmony and the rotation of the world and so forth takes place because of the light of the world. The second law is the law of atmosphere. Genesis chapter one and verse six. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And the firmament is what they call heaven. That is the first heaven. It's the atmospheric heaven. And God separated them from the water. And so you had the atmospheric heaven and it divided everything. It governs uh, the weather and so forth. This is the law of the atmosphere. And without the atmosphere, again, we would not survive because we wouldn't have oxygen and so forth and so on. And thirdly, the law of the bounds of land and sea. And Genesis 1 and verse 9, the Bible says, And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. So we find that there was a boundary set by God that waters should come this further and no further. And so that boundary shows us the limit of the saturation, of tidal saturation. Uh, the waters can come this this far and no further. We're gonna pause here today and then we will continue, we'll pick this up next time and then go into the other study. Uh, let us pray. Loving Lord, how grateful we are today for your words and your love. Today we come to you because we want to live to give you glory. Give us your peace. In Jesus' name we pray and help us to live in your light, in your glory. Keep us faithful. And when you shall come, Lord, I pray that all of us who are listening to your words will be ready to meet you and live with you forever. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Brethren, God bless you and have a wonderful evening as you continue to listen to God's words.